A memorable childhood event. One of the most memorable events in my life was my first and last trip around South America on a cargo ship when I was 10. This experience was only possible because my father was a captain of a cargo ship. He would transport cargo to countries like Brazil, Chile, and Argentina, and North America as well. My dad's job was the reason he was away most of the time, and I used to feel terribly sad that I never had my dad around while I was growing up. But when the given day, I found the value of his job. He was able to take my mom and I on one of those trips. I remember it vividly. I was 10 years old and still attending school. I was three weeks away from vacation time when my dad arrived in Cartagena, came home and gave us the news. Mom and I were going to travel with him on his ship to South America. I remember I didn't know how to feel. I was somewhat confused because I didn't want to fail the school year. I was even part of the cast for the school end of the year musical. I'm going to fail fifth grade, mom, I said worriedly. Leave that to me, she replied. The next day, I remember my mother going to school to speak directly with the principal about our family situation. She told him that my father traveled most of the time and that we hardly spent time with him. She was so persuasive that he allowed me to end school earlier, even without doing the final school tests. After that, I was the happiest girl in town, ready to have my very first international trip. We got on board in early November. The ship was not the biggest one in the company, but it was huge enough for me, especially at that age. The crew consisted of mostly men and two women, mom and me. I was the only child on that ship. My dad assigned me a room just for me near his room. It had a small fridge, a couple of beds, a bathroom, a sofa with a table. The windows of the ship were perfectly round and they had a heavy lock on it so the sea water wouldn't get in. The shower had an iron handle so you could hold on to it while showering in case the ship's motions were too intense. It even had a sort of bench attached to the shower wall. But that room was only for sleeping. I remember my dad coming to my room in the early morning to wake me up and send me with my mom so that I would keep her company while he was on the deck, checking on the crew, the ship, and everything else. The first couple of days, I was so excited about being in the ship with a permanent view of the water and the surroundings, the rooms in the ship, the sound of the machine at all times, it was surreal. Then there were the ship motions. When the weather conditions were good, I didn't feel a thing. But during storms and strong winds, the ship swayed intensely and I had to hold on to the walls to keep my balance. There were times the doors of the fridge would open and I could hear the cans of soda rolling back and forth on the floor in the middle of the night. These sounds woke me up at night. It took me a while to get used to all this. The constant movement, the permanent wearing of the ship's engine, the feeling of dizziness, the sight of the never-ending ocean, the lack of houses, the roads, mountains, it all felt like traveling to other space, and the sea was a different planet. There were times the trips felt short. When the destination was a nearby country, it would only take a couple of days at most. That's how long it took from Cartagena to Panama City. The best part of being in Panama was that Panama Canal. My father took me to the deck and gave me a pair of binocular glasses, and I could see the whole process in the canal. I remember my mom taking many pictures while we were there, following the process step by step. However, after the ship left Panama, the next destination was Santos, Brazil, going across the Pacific Ocean. That route implied crossing the fjords and channels of Chile, a channel surrounded by rocks on each side that made it difficult and risky for any navigator to go through safely. Thank God there was an experienced pilot commanding the ship for that area. The view was breathtaking. Huge rocks with almost no vegetation surrounded by water all over in the middle of the cold weather. 
Not a soul lives in that part of Chile. Only sea lions and some birds are found in that isolated part of the world. The crossing lasted three days of sailing slowly across the channels. It was the beginning of summer and we endured long cold days and extremely short and even colder nights. But I didn't mind the cold or the lack of friends to play with. I didn't even care that I was literally trapped in that ship and couldn't go anywhere. I was delighted to be there. Mom and I would spend the morning reading old newspapers, watching newly released movies my dad had bought in Panama, you know, for the trip. We would listen to the radio station detected by a shortwave radio my dad had. We would play cards, war games, or solve crossword puzzles and have endless conversations about life, friends, countries, music, the future, and whatever crossed our minds. There were days the three of us would visit the front of the ship, watch the sunset in the horizon, see the dolphins swim and jump in the water and sing songs while enjoying the moment. This is a memory that I will always carry in my heart.